Yeah. Reich had a book uh, which is available now in English. It was originally called Die Beoni in German. Uh, I think it came out in 1934, something like that. Uh, it's in English now called The Bion Experiments on the Origin of Life. And it's a as big a heresy now as it was back in those early days in uh, Norway when he made those experiments. Uh, but there's a, a, a lot of people have replicated the Bion experiments. I used to give seminars at my, at my uh, facility in Oregon where we had uh, three different uh, professors. Uh, two, two were medical doctors, one was a, a, a biologist, and it was me. I was assisting mostly. And I made a video from, we had a whole bunch of photographs and videotapes we made of those seminars which uh, is now a, a YouTube video, which goes through the procedures of some of these bion experiments. And they really do show that you can take inner, inorganic material or organic material and heat it red hot, boil it, uh, put it in an autoclave where it's under high pressure and boiling. And then if you portion it out using sterile technique, uh, that you can get reorganization of life in those uh, petri dishes in, in vitro. Uh, it's, it's stunning. Uh, there's a new book titled Wilhelm Reich Biologist by Dr. James Strick. It was published by Harvard University Press. This was a breakthrough that such a highfalutin university press would even publish such a book. And he goes through all this in great detail. So uh, if that's your interest, that would be a Read Reich's original book, uh, The Bion Experiments, and also this one by Strick, Wilhelm Reich Biologist, and see my video. Thank you. It seems like, uh, Eric Dollard, with your work, it's, it's about the, uh, in a coil, um, how the uh, capacitance relates between the wires. And then it seems like capacitors here play a big role. I heard you mention to DeMeo about um, these organ accumulators just being essentially uh, big capacitors. Um, and then I'm just kind of wondering if we could talk about more uh, the relationship between organ and ether and electricity. And we seem to go back and forth between the two, but I have trouble tying these together. Uh, I think Jimeo might do a better job than me on that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I can think of are anomalies that have occurred within my own experiments, such as I didn't mention this uh, yesterday uh, about the uh, the spectrographic research that I've done, but when I started doing the water charging inside the organ accumulator, uh, it suddenly out of nowhere came all of these electrostatic effects where I was touching doorknobs and getting shocked and so on. It were things that never had happened under similar atmospheric conditions using uncharged water. Because I, when I first got my spectro spectrometer, I studied just water all by itself and other fluids to learn the techni technique and, and so forth and establish some basic control uh, parameters. And so when I started charging with the organ accumulator, uh, all this sparky stuff started happening. And then uh, it, it blew out my spectrometer. You know, it's a little solid state box and I put the cuvette uh, of water in there and, you know, the whole thing blew up. So I had to send it back to Ocean Optics and they said, well, the central processing chip had blown out and they repaired it and sent it back to me uh, even more better than <laughs> when I first got it. And um, so I, now I have grounding plates and wire, grounding wires, and whenever I bring orgone charge water near it, or I touch those things and touch the, uh, the cuvette to it as well. Uh, so there's something sparky going on in water. You know, you normally think of water that electrical charge is going to dissipate within it. Um, but it, it seems to build up a charge, and uh, somehow this is expressed on the surfaces of the of the container or uh, in, into the as a field just above it. Okay. Uh, so this needs a lot more study uh, just by itself, which I'm I'm making some 
careful steps in that direction. Um, but it seems uh, there is this connection between orgone energy and static electricity. Reich said that the static electricity was a secondary byproduct of the orgone charge itself. Okay. So, uh, and I think he was basically correct about that. He has a, a whole series of experiments he did in, the, uh, uh, in his early work with bions on electrostatics, because in the bion experiments, he was getting all kinds of electrostatic uh, phenomena were expressing themselves. And one of his basic experiments, which I did mention previously, is the discharge rate of a static electroscope is slowed greatly by putting it into an organ accumulator. And Eric is correct. It is a large capacitor. The accumulator is a large capacitor. I call it a hollow capacitor. Right. It's like having a, a big capacitor, but somehow you etch out a, a little chamber in the middle of it. Yeah, there's one distinct difference is, is one plate is missing. On the outside, the metal plate is missing. Mm -hmm. So I call it a longitudinal electrostatic condenser because it's condensing. That's why they use the word condenser until somebody, you know, in the United Nations told us that we have to use capacitor or hertz okay. or 50 cycles or whatever. Right. So. It's the outer plate is missing so that the dielectric can be exposed to the environment. And the inner plate is present because once the orgone precipitates into the center, then the metal becomes a reflector mm -hmm. to the bound orgone, just like electromagnetism is bound or reflected from the metal wires that contain it. And then from that point, you lead the orgone out of a through a hollow uh, metal iron mm. pipe. So what you used to use was um, the flexible uh, conduit in electrical work that used to be steel until they changed it to aluminum. I think you still, some codes are gonna require steel. I think you could still get it. Yeah. And it goes through it like a hose. At that point, it's hydrodynamic. It has no more resemblance to electrical. It's, it's more of a fluidic ethereal type of thing. So I actually, I built, the, built them concentrically, like, uh, like the inside of a uh, you know, regular capacitor, yeah. uh, using uh, cans, different size like soup cans, mm -hmm. and then bigger cans and littler cans. And then I had a piece of what we call flex in the electrical business. And then I had a little iron funnel, kind of like a spreader. Uh -huh. And we set this thing up and we, had uh, some plants in, uh, in flower pots and we set this thing out in the garden and within a half hour the plant turned away from the sun and turned towards the funnel. Whoa. I was convinced. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs>